ABC News' Mona Koser Abdi recently sat down with Emmy Award-winning director, producer, and screenwriter Judd Apatow to discuss his new two-part documentary series, George Carlin's American Dream, premiering tonight on HBO Max. The documentary explores Carlin's journey to stand-up and how he became known as the dean of counterculture comedy. He changed comedy three or four times, and he's still talking to us. Was a rebel. Can't educate our young people, can't get health care to our old people, but we can bomb out of your country, all right. Judd Aptow, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to name some of your titles. You're okay. director, producer, screenwriter, author, probably so much more. But I do want to talk about this new documentary that you directed titled George Carlin's American Dream. And part one of the documentary actually starts with highlighting how so relevant today much of his commentary still is, particularly his commentary on abortion rights, for example. Here's another question I have. How come when it's us, it's an abortion, and when it's a chicken, it's an omelet? <laughs> so how do you think that his material has stayed so relevant over the decades, and why revisit it? I think he wasn't a comedian who talked about what was going on that day, so he didn't do a lot of jokes about, you know, the president at the time. I mean, he has a couple of Sandinista jokes, a couple of Reagan references, but for the most part, he's philosophical, and he's talking about the big issues and the big ideas. Over the several decades, um, he reinvented himself as a stand-up comedian. There are a lot of big-name comedians that are in this documentary. For example, Jerry Seinfeld. I'm very, I'm very glad to be here. Chris Rock. We need some bullet control. <laughs> we need to main, we need to control the bullets. That's right. I think all bullets should cost five thousand dollars. John Stewart. We have so many weapons, and I'm not afraid of retaliation from other countries because we are very strong. I'm sure we'll all be saved by the emergency broadcast system. I'm not worried about it. How has George Carlin inspired those comedians? I think that for people our age, like, he was big in the 70s. And so he was one of the first people who had, like, amazing comedy albums. He's breaking down language, all the words you're not allowed to say or you'll get in trouble. They arrested me for profanity. The Supreme Court restricts the broadcast of dirty words. The iconic seven bad words that you can't yes. use. Um, how has George Carlin inspired you? Well, I mean, first of all, just his courage. I mean, he took on the big ideas. And I think that he also was great for basically, you know, 50 years. And I think you know, as I get a little older, you think, how do you not get crusty and how do you not repeat yourself? So I'm always in inspired by someone who does maybe their best work near the end of their career. What's really interesting to me about this documentary, though, it doesn't just talk about George Carlin, the comedian. It touches on some darker points in his life. Why highlight the good and the bad? Well, I think with these kind of documentaries, what I'm interested in is, you know, what happened to someone as a kid? What trauma did they go through that made them want to be a comedian? Mm -hmm. And then how did that changed the type of community they became. And now the drugs are there. And that really did undermine everything in our family. I did as much cocaine as there was in the immediate three county area at that time. <laughs> he had collapsed in on himself. My career began to wane. I had to find my voice. Part of the story is he, mm -hmm. he met his wife Brenda at a comedy club in the Midwest and they got married very quickly in 1960. But you know, due to you know the times, she stayed home with, with their daughter Kelly and really was denied the ability to pursue her own dreams because he was on the road trying to be a, a comedian. And she became an alcoholic, and he had terrible cocaine addiction. That's part of the story of the documentary is how George and Brenda found each other again and got over their addictions. Another big project for you, your latest book. Mm -hmm. It is the sequel to Sick in the Head, Sicker in the Head. How did you push the conversation forward? Well, we were doing it during the pandemic, and a lot of these people were just stuck at home. So I went after people like Lin-Manuel Miranda and, and David Letterman and Whoopi Goldberg because I thought just their home. It was definitely a vulnerable moment for people. So I think the, the interviews are much more intimate because of that. They can't say no because they're not busy, right? They're just stuck at home? They usually could lie to me and just say, I got to <laughs> be on set. But there's no set. So, no so set. I took advantage of that. Um, but because of that, as you mentioned, the conversations were a lot more intimate, mm -hmm. a lot more personal. Yes. How do you get people to open up to you? I think that it, it's like talking to uh, someone who has the same job. So when I was a kid, I would interview people, but it was like, how do you do it? How do you get in? Mm -hmm. And now it's really just like, how are you doing? Like, how are you holding up? Are you happy? Are you stressed out? You know, why did you get in this business? And is it what you want it to be? 
you're talking to a lot of new era entertainers yeah. as well. Um, how, how has that shaped the way the book came together? Well, I thought with the first book, it was really a lot of like my heroes growing up. And that's the people who were around like in the early 1980s. But with this book, I tried to spread out and make it like way more diverse because I realized that when I was growing up, I saw myself on TV. So I could see Jerry Seinfeld on TV and think, oh, I could do that. But for so many comedians, they didn't see like their culture represented in comedy. So I wanted to talk to people like Mindy Kaling and Rami Youssef and Amber Ruffin to say, you know, what, what was the experience like for you not having that to try to figure out how to get into comedy and what you wanted to express as a comedian? As you continue this project and you talk to so many more people, what do you learn about yourself through this process? Uh, well, I, I generally learned that we're all very similar. You know, uh, I, I think in comedy, you know, something happens to you and it makes you compassionate or overly sensitive. You just start paying attention. And I think George Carlin is like that. He just thought, can you trust the, the government? Can you trust, uh, you know, big business? And I think that's what happens to a lot of comedians. They go through something and they just give everything a second look. Judd Apatow, thank you so much. Thank you. And Mona, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.